I am in Vietnam. I've been walking outside for like 10 minutes to get some breakfast and I'm already sweating. I think the first thing that struck me about Vietnam is just how many motorbikes there are. I knew that motorbikes were one of the main modes of transportation here in Vietnam and I saw quite a lot of them in Thailand too but I don't think I expected to see just the sheer number of motorbikes there are. It's so chaotic but I kind of love it. Um, this is also my first time solo traveling and I'm so happy to be here. I actually flew in last night but I was just so tired from a full day of travel that I ended up just staying in and ordering food um, through the Grab app. home now the charger for my camera batteries broke for some reason in one of the hotels when i was in thailand so i need to get a new camera battery charger and i happen to be on the street that only sells cameras or like camera gear which i thought was like kind of a cool coincidence that is why i'm filming on the camcorder i didn't get a chance to do a room tour yet of my airbnb and so let me show you around and this is what the outside of my room looks like I have my shoes by the door and this little area is just kind of like a sitting room I'm not really sure how to describe it but cute little bean shaped couch then there are these wooden doors that leads into the main room which has a queen sized bed I have a little full body mirror and some books, a couple chairs. I hung up my bags over here. I'm trying to keep my stuff pretty organized because I'm only staying here for three more nights. So I don't want to spend too much time packing. And there's a little school chair table thing that I unfolded because there's not really a table in this apartment. And so I just unfolded it to have like a little bedside table. The kitchen is so cute. It's quite small, but has everything that I need. Mini fridge down here. Owner is really into like home decor and so that was one of like the key selling points of this apartment. And then we have the bathroom, toiletries and my makeup on the sink. On my way home I visited Tired City. So I got a couple souvenirs here which I thought would be nice because it's a little bit different from just like the typical souvenir shops. I collect pins from all the places that I've traveled to and so I got this one. I like that it has like the little Vietnamese flag. And then I got six postcards. I got these ones for my friends. They're all very different designs. I was trying to think of what they would choose. I also love the colors on these. For myself, I got a little coffee nature postcard. This one was so cute. They literally only had one left in the entire store and so I feel like it was kind of meant to be. So like I said before, this is my very first time solo traveling. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I am an introvert and I actually really do love spending time alone. But something that I very quickly realized when I first came here was how overwhelmed I would feel. I didn't really plan much of an itinerary, which I don't know if that was a mistake. 
but I just wanted to kind of go with the flow, especially because I am solo traveling, I can just kind of do whatever I want. But I was watching some videos on Vietnam yesterday and like some travel guides and stuff, and I got so overwhelmed at just like the sheer amount of things that I can do while I'm here. I'm not going to be able to see everything and I shouldn't even try to see everything because that's simply impossible. And while I was watching these travel vloggers, I felt the need to suddenly like fill up my schedule with sightseeing and tours and things like that. That's not even what I like to do. I prefer to have a lot of time in my schedule to just wander around, visit coffee shops, people watch. I tried speaking Vietnamese in the places that I went today. But every time I tried, they just spoke back to me in English. I don't know if it's because my pronunciation is really bad. It's probably that. And then when I was at the convenience store, the man started speaking to me in fluent Japanese. so hot that I think I might pass out. Today is day two of being in Hanoi and I am on my way to drop off some laundry. There are a bunch of kids that are staring at me right now as, as I awkwardly stand um, on the sidewalk but I need to get to a place with AC ASAP so let's go! Kilo is uh, 100,000. Mm -hmm. uh, you can Before eight? Yeah. Okay. Thank of course, we keep it. I have not eaten lunch yet, and it is currently almost 3 p.m. And so I'm gonna go find a place to eat. It is 99 degrees right now, and I don't know why I decided to wear jeans, but I feel like anything that I wear is gonna be hot no matter what, and so I just decided to dress the way that I wanted to. I'm actually at a place that my nail tech recommended to me. She said this is a food that a lot of locals like. They're known for chaka. I don't think I'm saying that right, but it's like a fish, like a seafood dish. This is actually the first time since I've come to Vietnam where I've eaten at a proper restaurant. So far I've only eaten at like food stalls or street food vendors. I'm surrounded by couples and families, but at least I have you guys. Honestly, I'm very used to eating alone. I feel like it's just something that I did a lot, especially when I was in college. One thing that I like about Vietnamese cuisine is that they use a lot of fresh herbs in all of their food. So there's chives, there's green onion, there's basil, there's lettuce, there's spring onion. And so everything feels very fresh and light, which is really nice. Like, look how much greens there are compared to the amount of protein. I brought my Kindle to the nail salon with me and I was able to get through almost the entirety of a book. I'm currently reading I Who Have Never Known Men. The lighting is so awful and I look like a mess but I have given up on looking cute because it's just... It's too hot man, like, let me live. 
The table next to me is having a very, very interesting conversation that I am eavesdropping on. I feel like that's one of the fun things about traveling alone or eating alone. You can eavesdrop on other people's conversations. joking I don't know if you can see the detail on that but she spent like 30 minutes just on this nail when I sat down to get my nails done my nail tech was like do you have time today and I was like yeah you know I'm solo traveling of course I have time and she was like okay good because this might take three to four hours three to four hours I was like well okay um, I've never gotten omakase nails done, so I don't know how long they usually take. So I gave her a few inspo pictures, but after that, she just kind of took the reins. But since I didn't have any previous nails on and my nails were short, I was like, surely it wouldn't take that long. But then when she spent 45 minutes exclusively on my cuticles, that was when I was like, okay, it's gonna take a while. They even bought me a drink, which was really nice, and the service was just so good. So if you're ever in Hanoi, I highly recommend going to Haruno Nails. You can just DM them on Instagram to make an appointment, but the workers there are so sweet. They're so talented. Today is my last full day in Hanoi, and I'm going to Da Nang tomorrow. I still haven't booked where I'm gonna stay. I kind of forgot that I only booked where I'm staying in Hanoi, so I still haven't booked where I'm staying in Da Nang or Saigon. We'll need to find a place tonight. I didn't get to do as much as I wanted to yesterday because the nails just took way longer than I expected. And after I ate dinner, I was just so tired that I wanted to go home. Um, and so I passed out like as soon as I came back. This is my OOTD. I dropped off my clothes at the laundromat yesterday. This is like the only outfit that I had left. Let's go! Today is like the most energy that I've had in a while, which is nice.
you see this line? This is where my bag strap was. <laughs> I am finally home. I was out for like seven hours today and it is around 5 p.m. now. I came home to charge my phone, my camera batteries, and also my batteries. One thing that I like about Vietnam is like everything seems to close pretty late. Like all the restaurants, cafes, even like clothing stores close around 9 or 10. And so I feel like I don't have to rush my itinerary. In the States, everything closes so early for some reason. After hand washing my clothes for the past week and a half, it is so nice to have fresh, clean, folded laundry. It's the little things. All right, I have awoken. I'm finally recharged and ready to go back out. Since it is my last night in Hanoi, I do want to explore a little bit more of the night scene. Not clubbing or anything like that, but I still have so many street food spots saved into my Google Maps list that I haven't gotten to try yet and I'm already leaving tomorrow. I bought a perfume a couple days ago that I need to go pick up before they close and I bought a rice perfume from the brand Da Nang, their local Vietnamese fragrance brand. I've been slowly getting into perfume the past couple of years and so whenever I am in like a new era of life, I like to have one specific perfume that kind of commemorates that era of my life and so I didn't actually bring any of my perfumes with me because I specifically wanted to get one while I was in Vietnam. Damn, it's hot outside. So I changed my outfit because I really wasn't feeling the black shirt. Yes, I got the white rice. And you by the amount of cars and mopeds but I feel like if I were not already used to the city life I would be so overwhelmed right now interestingly they close off a lot of the smaller alleyways um, so that mopeds and cars can't drive through um, maybe it's because it's like a Saturday night it's like a street market vibe every night
it is Sunday morning and it is my last morning in Hanoi. I got a coconut coffee. I spent most of the morning packing and <laughs> booking my flight and my hotel in Da Nang because I didn't do any of that. Like the only thing I booked when I came to Vietnam was my Airbnb in Hanoi. I feel like that is very untype A of me. This is so refreshing. Mmm, that's so good. I still haven't had any breakfast, but one thing about Hanoi is that there are so many cafes, and today's a Sunday morning, and there are so many people that are just sitting outside the cafe, talking on their phones, people watching, taking a smoke. Definitely feels like a third space. I feel like there are a lot of third spaces here in Hanoi. If you don't know what a third space is, it's basically a space besides a home or work that you can go to that is usually very low barrier of entry. So like libraries, cafes. And because everything is so affordable here, it just makes sense to go outside of your home to meet up with friends and even to just like hang out with your family. The community here is just feels very accessible. Something that also I think really left an impression on me is that there are so many kids. For being a major city, I was so surprised to see just how many kids there are running around even when it's like pretty late at night. And I feel like that says a lot about the safety of a city. So, you know, in the in the US, especially if you're in a major city, you're never going to see kids just like running around late at night. That's just like so dangerous and of course there's a lot of young adults but there's also a lot of elderly people here i don't know if it's because i'm from a country that is just so hyper individualistic all the spaces and people here seem very community oriented i've only been in hanoi and these are just like my very surface level observations i still haven't been to any other city outside of hanoi i'm just sharing this with you guys because i have no one else <laughs> i can talk to about this because i'm solo traveling yeah i really love my time here i honestly wish i could stay a bit longer because i didn't get to see everything that i wanted to do but i'll be back hopefully